Hello and welcome to the service for the 2nd of May 2021 from Monton Unitarian Church. I begin as always by lighting our chalice candle. And some words by Alexis Engelbrecht. Welcome to this community of seekers, of questioners, and of those open to the revelation that comes from experiences with one another and the spirit of life. May we remember that while we have some answers, we don't have all the answers. While we know some things, we don't know everything. And while we have lived, others have experiences very different from our own. Welcome to this community full of questions and possibilities. One of the hymns that I'm really longing to be able to sing again in church that we often share at the start of our services is by Shirley Arena Murray. These are the words. Come and find the quiet centre in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the space where we are freed. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see all the things that really matter, be at peace and simply be. Silence is a friend who claims us, cools the heat and slows the pace. God it is who speaks and names us, knows our being, touches base. Making space within our thinking, lifting shades to show the sun, Raising courage when we're shrinking, finding scope for faith begun. In the spirit, let us travel open to each other's pain. Let our lives and fears unravel, celebrate the space we gain. There's a place for deepest dreaming. There's a time for heart to care. In the spirit's lively scheming, there is always room to spare. So let us join together in a time of prayer. And this prayer is by Liz Weber. Spirit of life. Help us to be present with all that is our life, both our deepest sorrows and our greatest joys, so that we can truly live, engaging fully in our own life and in our community. Spirit of community, help us know how linked we are, how each one of our cares touches us all, Help us to ask for support when we are in need and offer our support to others when we are able so that we may rest in the solace of one another's love. Spirit of love, help us to love our neighbour as we love ourselves so that we might fully embody love and resist hatred. Spirit of resistance, help us to stick up for what is right, even when we are tired or afraid. Help us to dream of the world as it should be, and act to bring that world about. Help us to find hope each day. Spirit of hope, help us through this day and each day. Help us to be present for all that is our life. For all this, 
we pray. Amen. Our story today is a story I've actually read at several weddings, although it's not officially a wedding story. It's by Marjorie Williams. It's an extract from The Velveteen Rabbit. What is real? asked the rabbit one day when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender before Nana came to tidy the room. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and a stick-out handle? Oh, real isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When someone loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you're real, you don't mind being hurt. Or does it happen all at once, like being wound up? he asked, all bit by bit. It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily, or have sharp edges, or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, and your eyes drop out, and you get loose in your joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. I suppose you are real, said the rabbit, and then he wished he had not said it, for he thought the skin horse would be upset. But the skin horse only smiled. Someone made me real, he said. That was a great many years ago, but once you are real, you can't become unreal again. It lasts for always. And our reading is a reflection based on that story. It's by the Reverend Amanda Popeye, called Becoming Ourselves. When I was pregnant with my second child, one of the things I was most curious and anxious about was telling my first child the news of her expected sibling. She was three at the time, and I wasn't sure how much she would be able to grasp about the major change her life was about to undergo. I was ready to answer any questions she might have, honestly and age-appropriately. I started off by being as literal as possible. Guess what, I said. You are going to have a sibling. There's a baby growing in my tummy. That seemed like a good start, although I was ready to switch over to the anatomically correct uterus, if needed. But my older child isn't a scientist, it turns out. She's a philosopher. And so she asked the one question I hadn't prepared for. Oh, she said, who is it going to be? I don't know, I said. We're going to have to wait and see. Isn't that always the way? We're still waiting to see who that second child is going to be, although she's been with us for seven years now, and is very much her own person. But she's also changing and growing, becoming someone new all the time, as her older sister is, and as I am, and as you are. Sometimes... Our becomings are dramatic. We realise that the gender we thought we were, or others thought we were, isn't correct after all. Or we discover that the career we had planned, or the marriage we had begun, isn't really who we are, or is no longer right for who we have become. Sometimes, though, our becoming is gradual. 
a kind of unfolding and changing and shifting over time. Always, it is lifelong. Which isn't to say we aren't already who we are. We are that too. We are already ourselves the minute we are born and every minute thereafter. However long our lives end up being, even when they are cut painfully and tragically short. We are our full selves for every second, every month, every year of those lives. And we are also becoming ourselves, growing and stretching. In the growing time of my life, my soul experienced something like the growing pains I remembered in my legs as a child. I became a minister, a mother, a middle-aged person. It's usually been uncomfortable and almost always inconvenient. The old me seemed fine, the one I was just yesterday. Why bother with all the shifting? And yet, when I come out the other side, I invariably think, oh yes, this is the me I was supposed to become. This is who I am. Until next time. Who is it going to be? Who are you? going to be today and tomorrow? Who are we all becoming together? Let's join together again in a time as, of prayer as we think about who we might be becoming. This prayer is by Katie Kandarian Morris. God of many names, the personal and the mysterious, we have come to a quiet time, an interior place, a place for the deepening of spirit, the enrichment of soul. We seek to know ourselves by knowing you. Let us have the courage to sit in the unknowing, to look for the answers, even if they are to sit with our own questions, to be willing to be authentic with ourselves, to be ready to bring our face to the world. Let us be willing to know others by welcoming their genuine features, by welcoming them into the world, by appreciating the beauty that comes from seeing wholeness and truth. Much of our human struggle is with what we do not know or understand. It is often difficult not to want answers, or even more difficult not to think we have them already. May we experience what we do not know, not as an individual failure, but as an invitation to community. May we seek not the true answers so much as the true questions, knowing that true questions make of our lives meaningful even if sometimes restless journeys. May we be grateful for the restless voices in our communities. Let's take a few moments of quietness together to listen for those restless voices within ourselves. Let us be quiet together. Now.
May we be good company to one another and to ourselves in our questions and on our journey. Amen. Questions are wonderful things. From children wanting to know everything about how their world works, even if it does lead to endless repetitions of, but why? To adults wanting to explore, the, explore their world even further. Questioning is vital. Curiosity, that wish to explore, discover, push boundaries of knowledge, is how children develop, of course. How they find out what's good to eat. Bananas, carrots, chocolate. And what's not? That Lego brick that just won't be crunched, no matter how hard you try. What feels nice? The fleece on your bed. And what doesn't? Gravel, when you fall on it. And so on. On to bigger things as you grow up. What activities you enjoy, how things work, how societies function, and so on. And actually that questioning never stops. We are each bundles of living questions, big ones and little ones, every day. From our desire to learn about other planets in other solar systems, to how we can learn to live together on this one. From our questions about whether vitamin C tablets really will prevent that oncoming cold, to questions about how we can help the children we love become the people they can be, to whether your neighbour will ever stop playing such loud music late at night. And our capacity for this kind of lifelong curiosity is pretty unique among mammals. Other animals might be innately curious while they are young, but humans have the capacity to stay curious our whole lives. Sadly, while we have the capacity, we don't always stay so curious as we grow up. We absorb a whole host of messages about how we're supposed to be and think and what we're supposed to do, and we stop questioning. Don't even notice the range of topics we've lost interest in, or the number of things we think we fully understand that we've ceased to question or wonder much about. By the time we're adults, we've learned a particular set of viewpoints from the people around us or experiences we've had, and we're frequently inclined to just stick with that. Curiosity killed the cat, we're told, Best not to ask questions that might get us into trouble. But if we want to keep growing as people, if we want to keep becoming the person we are meant to be, we have to be curious. And to be genuinely curious, we have to let go of certainty, let go of conviction, let go of the ways we've always perceived things, or how others do things, or the way things have just always been. And that takes courage. In her meditation, called Open Eyes, Victoria Safford puts it this way. The awakened eye is a conscious eye, a willful eye, and brave, because to see things as they are, each in its own truth, will make you very vulnerable. That unself-conscious vulnerability, that openness that is characteristic of youth, it's part and parcel of being able to see without preconceived notions, to be able to be openly curious. To see in this way, Safford also writes, simply to look and to see 
is an ethical act and intentional choice. To see with open eyes is a spiritual practice and thus a risk, for it can open you to ways of knowing the world and loving it that will lead to inevitable consequences. In other words, like young children who learn and grow by what they do and see and experience, by the way they push and pull objects and people and everything around them, adults too, at any age, can push and pull and try things and learn and be changed by our curiosity. Some of you may remember the words of Jesus, those who do not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. How can I, how can we, find that childlike place where we know we're going to stumble while we learn, but trust in an unfolding future? Where we can know there will be things that are too big for each of us, but we don't have to fix them all alone. Where we have every reason to be confident in the joy of this moment, where we can remember our playfulness, connect with the people around us and have one heck of a blast of an adventure as we go. Yes, curiosity can get us into trouble from time to time. Pandora opened up a world of hurt when she opened up Zeus's nasty bag of tricks, but she let out hope into the world at the same time. Curiosity allegedly killed the cat, though with nine lives that would take some doing. Sometimes questions lead to uncomfortable answers. We can find out unpleasant things about ourselves and people we love, about things that we thought were good but have dark sides to them. Sometimes there don't seem to be any answers. Who is it going to be, Mummy? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And sometimes we have to go through difficult, painful learning curves in order to come out the other side. As our second reading said, In the growing time of my life, my soul experienced something like the growing pains I remembered in my legs as a child. I became a minister, a mother, a middle-aged person. It's usually been uncomfortable and almost always inconvenient. The old me seemed fine, the one I was just yesterday. Why bother with all this shifting? And yet, when I come out the other side, I invariably think, oh yes, this is the me I was supposed to become. This is who I am. Until next time. Who is it going to be? Learning curves are hard at times. Some discoveries can be unpleasant, painful, even dangerous. But not to ask, not to be courageous, not to question, not to search, not to be vulnerable, is to deny our very humanity, the very gift that makes us who we are. We should never stifle that wonderful question, why? that children ask so often. Because that why, and the what, who, where and how that goes with it, is their curiosity bringing their world to life for them. And the whys that we ask as adults, and the whats and the whos and the wheres and the hows, and all the new experiences that those questions can bring, are what help us continue to become ourselves. Becoming truly ourselves, 
and celebrating our true selves is both a form of loving and of being loved. As this final reading by a blogger named Enfleshed tells us. It's called Litany for Becoming. To become is a lifelong process. Nothing is constant, not even the self. We evolve in the midst of narratives meant only for some, and ways of being made narrow by fear and power. We must then have the courage to listen to the truth of our own lives, to the wisdom that comes from within, responding without resistance or need to control, but with welcome and curiosity. This is what ensures our becoming is an unfolding of our truest self. This lifelong labour cannot be carried out alone. It requires help from friends and lovers, family and creaturely companions, who bear witness to what makes us come alive, and say to us, listen, look, feel, pay attention to that. This is loving and being loved. Telling the stories, sharing in the memories, giving thanks for the relationships, understandings and experiences past that have shaped us to this day. This is loving and being loved. Celebrating new beginnings that excite. Holding risks together. Leaning into unknowns with the promises of support and companionship. This is loving and being loved. Listening to the future, calling uniquely to each of us in the midst of all of life's noise. Helping one another find our place in the shared labour of collective life. Supporting each other in what it is the world's ache is asking from us. This is loving and being loved. To say, for the first time, this is who I am. This is the truth of my body. This is what I know about myself. This is my name, and this is where my path is leading me. And to have it heard, have it received, have it affirmed, and then to say it again and again, as we change and as the world changes, and to have each proclamation greeted with an open-armed embrace. This is loving and being loved. There is no me without you. We shape one another. The sacred that birthed us weaves our lives together so that we can only find ourselves through shared becoming. For my journey and all its winding ways, for yours. For all the saints who laboured for what is, all the kin whose lives made ours possible, for all those yet to come for whom living our truths today will mean breaking possibilities open for them tomorrow. We pause. We give thanks. We acknowledge. This is loving and being loved. Our blessing today is by Antonia Bell Delgado. 
may we find the courage to revel in the experience of the mystery. May we approach the unknown with excitement, even if we can only muster a tiny bit. May we celebrate the curiosity that leads to searching. May we meet ourselves along the way and love ourselves unapologetically. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with me once again. And I'll see you same time next week. You in your home, me in mine. Until then, stay safe, stay strong, keep becoming who you are, and know that you are loved.